Hi, welcome to this example in my series on solving trig equations. Now what we've got here is to solve sine 2x equals sine x for x between 0 and 360 degrees inclusive. So how would we solve this equation? Well the first thing I notice in this particular example is that the angles are not the same. We've got the angle 2x here and the angle x here. But this angle, 2x, is double this angle, x. So that makes me think of the double angle formula, so that I can actually reduce this down to the same angle. So I'm hoping that you are familiar with the double angle formula. And the one that we need, that you'll find in most books of tables, is sine 2a is identical to 2 sine a cos a. And in this example, if a is the angle x, then 2a would obviously be 2x. So sine 2x is identical to 2 sine x cos x. So how does this work then? All we need to do is substitute for sine 2x 2 sine x cos x. So if we do that, 2 sine x cos x equals this sine x over here. Now I've got my equation in the same angle, angle x. What I notice now is that if I was to subtract sine x from both sides, I would have a common factor running through the equation. Look, I'll show you. If we subtract then the sine x from both sides, we would get that equals 0. And then I can pull out a common factor of sine x. I mean, normally I'd be trying to make this equation in terms of one trig function now. But as I say, seeing that I've got a common factor, that makes an easier solution. So I've got 2 cos x there, minus 1, and it equals 0. And now I can put each factor equal to 0. So sine x equals 0, this factor here, or this factor, 2 cos x minus 1, that would equal 0. So we've got two equations. I've achieved what I want. I've got an equation with one trig function in it, sine x equals 0. And then I've got this equation with one trig function in it, the cosine x. So I should be able to go on and solve them. So we'll start with this one. When sine x equals 0, I get x by taking the inverse sine of 0. You should know this set of results. If you don't, you can use your calculator and you'll find that if you do the inverse sine of 0, remember to be in degrees mode though, you'll get 0 degrees. What else though? Well, what are the other solutions? Well, you can get the other solutions from, say, drawing the graph. If we were to draw the graph of y equals sine x, that graph looks like this. It starts at the origin, naught, naught, peaks at 1 at 90 degrees, 0 at 180 degrees, at 270 degrees it's minus 1, and at 360 degrees it's 0. So we're after the values where sine x equals 0, which is here at the origin, naught, here at 180 degrees, and here at 360 degrees. So the solutions for this then are naught, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees. Now we've got the other equation to deal with, so if we just say when 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0, if we add 1 to both sides and divide by 2, we can make cos x the subject, and so cos x turns out to be 1 half. So therefore, x is equal to the inverse cos of a half. And again, this is a well-known result, one that you should already know. And if you use your calculator, again in degrees mode, remember, 
you'll find that x equals 60 degrees. But there are other solutions, and we can get the other solutions by considering a quadrant diagram. Starting at 0 degrees, this is 90, 180, 270, 360, going in this anti-clockwise direction as usual. Where is cosine a positive value? Well, cosine is positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. Mark two lines then, equally inclined to the horizontal line here. Mark in those angles. All we need to do is say which ones we want. Well, we want that one. That's a possible x. And starting from here again, go all the way around to the next blue line. So that too is a possible x. When we use the calculator then, an inverse cos a half, we got x to be 60 degrees. And that clearly corresponds to this red one, which is the same as this blue angle in here. So that is 60 degrees. That means this one in here is 60 degrees. So that means that the green one must be 360 degrees minus 60, making 300 degrees. So basically, there are our solutions. It's always a good idea just to put them in order of size. So if we do that, x will equal 0 degrees, 60 degrees, 180 degrees, 300 degrees, and finally 360 degrees. Okay, so there's our solution and hopefully you can model any similar example on this kind of idea.